Perfect. Thanks very much, Aaron. OK, so good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the NUI Galway Postgraduate Open Day. Uh, my name is Adrian Larkin, and I'm the Business Innovation Officer here at J. Karen School of Business and Economics. And we're really delighted to have you join us here today um, for our session on economics postgraduate opportunities here within our School of Business and Economics. So there's lots of reasons why you might be looking at a postgraduate degree to advance your career path, to develop a certain advantage in your career, improve your employment and salary prospects, develop your personal interests, become part of an alumni network, change your direction. Um, there's a lot of great reasons why you might be looking to choose a postgraduate degree. And what we really hope for today is that you're going to come away and be inspired to complete your postgraduate studies with us here. So just to introduce the format for today, I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to be joined here by our program directors in the discipline of economics and by a number of our alumni um, of the courses we're going to be featuring today who are going to share their experiences. So just to give you an outline as to the structure and the format of today, I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to NUI Galway, our School of Business and Economics, and how we give our graduates a competitive edge. I'll very briefly mention our admissions processes and our scholarship opportunities. I'm then going to hand over to the programme directors who are each going to give you an introduction to their courses. Following this, we'll come out of the slide deck and we'll hear from our alumni who have joined us here today. And finally, we'll open up to any questions that you might have for uh, members of our panel. So please feel free to post your questions in the chat bar at any point during the session. Our team will be responding to, uh, to chats during the session and we can put any questions that are outstanding to our panel at the end. So just to introduce NUI Galway. So NUI Galway has been inspired in mind since 1845. So we have over 175 years of experience in providing education. We're ranked within the top 2% of universities in the world, which really reflects our status as a global university. Over the weekend, uh, we got there was some very exciting news. NUI Galway was named the Sunday Times University of the Year 2022. Um, in the feedback that the review panel provided, the sense of community at NUI Galway and the spirit of the university were really commended. Um, and you have an opportunity to become part of our postgraduate community by applying to our programmes. So our university has been a defining and recognisable landmark within Galway City um, for a long time. Uh, we're very much a research-led institution we're based in the heart of a distinct and vibrant region. You know, Galway is renowned for its creative industries, medical industries, um, information systems, economy and innovation. Um, and you really have an opportunity to become pa part of a, a vast alumni network. So at NUI Galway, we really want to build on your passion for learning and encourage and support your desire to develop as a person and to explore your area of interest. And by studying with us, you will be given the support, knowledge and skills skills and self-confidence to achieve your goals and reach your full potential. Just to introduce the mission of our business school, so energised by our regional edge on the west coast of Ireland, we are a globally engaged school of business and economics for the public good that makes a transformative impact for students, society and business. So for the public good really emphasises our dual focus for society and for business. Um, and through our teaching, research and public policy impact, we, we actively contribute to sustainable societal uh, change in economic, social and natural environmental, uh, natural environmental context. And you'll hear more about that today. So our business school has been awarded many accreditations and accolades, which are really reflective of the global standards of our courses here at NUI Galway. So WACSB, for example, is the longest serving global accrediting body for business schools. It's the largest business education network in the world connect and connects students, educators and businesses worldwide. Athena Swan, we have, we have the, the Bronze Award, really re represents the school's commitment to equality, diversity, inclusion. So these accolades and accreditations really uh, reinforce the quality of what we offer here in the School of Business and Economics at NUI Galway and really re recognise within our offerings, you know, that we undertake research-led teaching, we have innovative teaching practices, we provide applied learning opportunities, global experience opportunities, work placement opportunities, opportunities to engage with the industry. And essentially what we want to do is ensure that you're ready for work, ready for your career and ready for the world when you finish uh, studying with us. So when you're studying in here at the School of B 
business and economics, it's very much a global classroom. So we have a very diverse student body with over 40 countries represented. So you're going to get experience working in multicultural teams, which is very representative of the diverse nature of the workplace you'll go into when you finish. So you have opportunities to work with different cultures, different perspectives, different ways of working, and which will support your personal and professional development as well. So very briefly on the application process, full information is available at nuigalway.ie backslash apply, um, but all of the applications are online. We encourage students to apply early. Our programs are in high demand and we make offers on a rolling basis. So the sooner you submit an application for the program, the sooner you'll hear back. Um, these are just some examples of some of the typical documents that are required. So a, pa a proof of identity, it might be transcripts or official exam results, um, a personal statement, English language competency certification, if you're applying from outside an English speaking country. And some of our programs might have specific requirements, which are all available on the website. If you're looking for tips on how to write a personal statement, um, we have uh, video tutorials and PDF booklets online to support you in doing that. There's also a number of funding opportunities that are available as well. Um, so we have opportunities available to EU students. We have a first class honour scholarship for students who have received a first class honours in a level A primary degree. Uh, we have scholarships available at school level across all of our programmes. There's opportunities to apply for the SUSE grant. If you're applying from outside of Europe, we have merit based scholarships, we have country based scholarships, we have school scholarships, there are also Government of Ireland scholarships. So a wide variety of funding opportunities that are available to you um, are available at nuigalway.ie backslash scholarships um, if you're looking for more information. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to the programme directors who are going to give introductions to their programmes. So Tom, if you'd like to come in and talk about the MSE in Global Environmental Economics, that'd be brilliant. Thank you. Yep. Thanks very much, Adrian. Uh, you can move straight to the next slide there. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm the Programme Director for the MSc in Global Environmental Economics. So this is a, a unique and innovative uh, programme launched in 2018. We're now in our fourth year and the programme has gone from strength to strength with uh, increasing demand for places each year and a growing reputation amongst both employers and uh, policymakers. So many of the greatest challenges that uh, societies face around the world today relate to environmental concerns, whether that's climate change, food or energy security, uh, the need to achieve sustainable and resilient forms of economic development, uh, sustainable use of resources, natural resources, pollution, biodiversity loss, etc. And the discipline of environmental economics then is central to both our understanding of these challenges and to the framing and evaluation of the appropriate policy responses. So if you want to help address uh, major environmental challenges to inform and develop the policies and the evidence base to meet these challenges, then this master's program in global environmental economics uh, could be the right, the next, uh, the right next step for you. Uh, here in, in uh, economics at NUI Galway, we have a long tradition of research in environmental economics. Our faculty are highly expert, highly research active uh, within a range of themes related to environmental economics, including agriculture, uh, marine, renewable energy and climate change. We also host two uh, research centres, so SEMRU is the leading a uh, socioeconomic research centre in Ireland on issues related to the marine and the blue economy. And then uh, the newly uh, newly launched CERIS, uh, that's the Centre for Economic Research on Inclusivity and Sustainability, um, where we uh, take a, very much an applied or data-driven approach to understanding overlaps between issues of environmental sustainability and social or economic uh, inequality. We also have strong and established uh, links to policymaking, both nationally and internationally, and that's reflected very much in uh, the range of placement opportunities available to students on the programme, which I'll, I'll talk about a bit more in a second. In terms of the structure of the programme, then it's very much designed to be an applied economics master's, but it starts from the core of a solid grounding in econometrics, microeconomics, uh, cost benefit analysis, and then you'll also be exposed to these more applied uh, modules. So in the first semester, you'll have a module on climate, the economics of climate change and a module on um, natural resource sustainability. And then in the second semester, the, the focus switches very much to uh, more applied policy oriented modules and development of skills around uh, economic analysis methods uh, and around research techniques. Uh, so you can skip to the next slide there, please, Adrian. Thanks. So why choose this program? Well, as I've mentioned, it's it's very much um, 
there's very much an applied focus in our program that's reflected in the, the kind of modules that are offered, uh, but also in the extracurricular activities that we offer. So that includes things like field trips, uh, career support, as well as guest lectures, virtual coffees with former students, with industry and policy representatives, etc. And a key feature of the program, as I mentioned, is the opportunity for work placement. And that's typically in the summer at the end of at the end of the master's program. And the placements have proved very popular and also a great stepping stone for students to move from study into the into the world of work or into the job market. So a number of our graduates have gone directly from uh, placements into full time contracts and it gives a great opportunity to experience life as a working economist. And the range of placement organizations that we work with is growing all the time. So just to give you a flavor there, uh, we've previously placed students with top policy research institutes in Ireland, including the ESRI and IGs, uh, as well as with representative bodies for wind energy and electricity sectors, with research centers in agriculture or the marine, internationally at climate change research centers, as well as with banks, tech startups, consultancy firms, etc. And we also have the opportunity of some internal placements where students can join research projects hosted by one of our, uh, our research centers here in economics. Uh, graduates of the program can expect to have developed high level skills in economic analysis of global environmental issues in evaluating and informing public policy in these areas, uh, as well as advanced data analysis and a range of applied economic skills and tools. So I think I'll, I'll stop there. There's a brief overview of the program. I'll hand back to Adrian, um, but I'm more than happy to take questions either later in the session or if anyone wants to follow up uh, after the fact. My email was there in, in the first slide. Uh, or you, you can find it on the NUI Galway website. So thanks very much. Back to you, Adrian. Perfect. Perfect, Tom. Thanks so much for that. Um, and we'll be hearing from an alumni from the MSc in Global Environmental Economics um, later in the session as well. So just moving on then to our next program. So we'll look at the MSc in Health Economics. So Brendan, I'll hand over to you for this program. Uh, thanks very much, Adrian. And again, you can move on. To, yeah. So um, I'm delighted with the opportunity to talk to you about the MSc in Health Economics. The program is now in its 13th year and uh, has gone from strength to strength. Uh, this year, for example, we've got 28 students who've come in to do the full time program. We've got three students on the first year of the part-time program and six students in the second year of the part-time program. So very much like what Tom said, uh, we'd, we'd make a strong case for saying that issues of health and health care are, are very important in, in the world today. We hardly need to say that in, 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 in the current context of the pandemic and so on. But even before the pandemic, uh, societies were grappling with tremendously important issues about affordability of healthcare, access to healthcare, what were the what are the determinants of health, which are often outside of healthcare itself, uh, and um, and very interesting and important policy issues. And those uh, policy issues, um, not just in Ireland, but but um, outside Ireland as well. Adrian mentioned earlier what a diverse uh, student uh, intake we have, uh, our class we have in, in NUI Galway, and that's reflected very much in the health economics program. This year, for example, we've got students from at least 10 different countries, and um, that adds a tremendous uh, vibrancy and, and uh, to, to the class and, and greatly increases our, our learning. So um, you can move on, Adrian, please. Um, so yes, so um, so the, the 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 basic structure of the program is is um, uh, fairly straightforward. There's eight modules, eight taught modules, and a dissertation. So all of those um, modules are worth ten credits each. The first semester has four compulsory modules in um, um, basic health economics and in um, basic economics techniques of data management and econometrics. The second semester then has two compulsory models, uh, modules in uh, health policy and applied HTA, and then has a number of optional modules. And one of the striking features of our program is that some of our modules are taken by students in uh, in in programs from medicine uh, masters in clinical research and masters in obesity and similarly our students are able to take uh, some modules that are that are offered by the school of medicine and that reflects a very close relationship we have 
as a health economics group with the School of Medicine at NUI Galway and also reflects the the, the broader um, collaboration that's often undertaken in health economics. A lot of the time, health economics are working alongside uh, clinicians uh, on, on particular projects. Um, we've got a very strong association with uh, industry and policy makers. Uh, much of that is through this placement program, uh, as, as with the environmental program. We've got a, a summer placement program that typically starts in the middle of May and runs for at least eight weeks. Often they run for, for longer than that, depending on the company. Um, many of those placements are with leading pharmaceutical companies based in Ireland. Um, other placements are with health consulting companies and with regulatory agencies like uh, HICWA and uh, NCP. And quite a few of those placements have have um, have, have evolved into uh, full time jobs. So I know you're going to hear one of from one of our um, alumni uh, later, um, who who expand on his own journey from from program to to industry where he is now. And um, just like Tom said, um, um, you, so you saw my email address uh, earlier, and uh, you can easily find me if you have any further questions. Yeah, brilliant, Brendan. And, and we will be displaying email addresses and uh, follow uh, follow up information at the end of the presentation as well. So you will have another opportunity to make note of people's contact information. Um, Jason, I think I'm going to come to you next for the MS or for the. Um, MECON in international finance. So I'll hand over to you. Perfect. Thank you, Adrian, and good evening, everyone. Um, so thank you for this uh, great opportunity, I suppose, to talk a little bit about the, the actual international finance program at NUI Galway. I suppose like like the, the health economics program, in a way, um, it is a well-established program. It, it, it's been offered now by the discipline of economics for, for well over 10 years. And throughout this time, I suppose it, it's been very successful in equipping our students with, with the important skill set um, that's expected, I suppose, to, to compete in the in uh, a career in finance or for a career in finance. Um, I suppose throughout that time also, um, it has continually evolved to keep up with, with, with the, the pace of financial innovations. Um, as we know, the world of finance doesn't stand still. And as such, then our offerings in our, in our different modules on the program have have ad adopted um, th these frontier analysis as well um, to give our to give our students the the recruiting age. Um, why choose the program? I suppose um, the international finance program is designed with the, for with the essential modules. I suppose to deepen the students' understanding um, of the forces driving the global economy and the operations of the international financial markets, and how they are both connected. It's an understanding of how both of these are connected. I suppose unlike um, other programs or more typical programs in finance, the uniqueness of the international finance program here at NUI Galway is that uh, economics runs through the heart of it. Okay, so the, the program really uh, provides both a, a foundation in the economic theory of international finance, as well as the necessary quantitative and technical skills used for applied financial analysis. Um, this, this really equips the student with an all around skill set. Um, they've got both the economics as well as the finance. And importantly, the, the economic implications for financial markets, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit about in the, in, on the next slide as well. Um, I suppose the emphasis really is on the current issues in international economic policy and on, of course, recent developments, um, multinational investment flows, dynamics of exchange rates, risk management and asset pricing. And I suppose some students have the opportunity to study um, some core modules in like listed there, uh, applied portfolio management, international finance, derivatives and risk management, financial data analytics, macroeconomic theory and policy, and financial econometrics. And I suppose they also have optional uh, modules as well, such as microeconomics, global financial economics, financial history, and um, uh, the global economy. So I suppose from a theoretical point of view, some of those modules like macroeconomic theory and uh, international finance are equipping um, our students with that rigorous foundation in, in economic theory. and then. Other modules then like applied portfolio management, financial data analytics, financial econometrics are much more applied, uh, much more applied focus. <clears throat> okay, uh, Adrian, can you uh, switch to the next slide, thanks. So we, overall really, it's about developing a global career path and that's what finance is. I mean, finance is global and um, the program here um, on international finance does really present you with a skill set to, to compete in that, in that global frontier. Um, it's it is overall the program will be your passport to an exciting, rewarding world of financial services career. And 
Why is that the case? Well, it provides you with a deep understanding of both the microstructure and macroeconomic implications, as I described before, um, of important financial issues, as well as, of course, then the technical skills to analyze those. Um, so, for example, from the, 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 the uniqueness of the economics running through the program means that you, you take into account the global crises, such as um, global macro crises, such as the financial crisis uh, post-2008, European sovereign debt crisis in between, right up to the pandemic uh, of current day. Um, and you look at these these big big picture factors and how they um, uh, are how they impact on financial markets, as well as the, the more microstructure stuff. Um, uh, Together with that, you get a real hands-on, uh, real-world experience of computer-based machine learning and simulation models for financial analytics. Where students, um, where most of our students have no experience of any coding or programming um, in Python or R, and we typically take them from having no experience to being really proficient in 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 both those packages. Uh, and that's that's the standard expected of today's financial world. I mean, one of the industry standard packages in, in finance now is Python, and given that we're with frontier analysis and machine learning and um, and algorithmic trading and high frequency trading, uh, these these are the type of uh, methodologies that um, that a career in finance you're expected to have now. Um, so I suppose the financial services business has really put an enormous value on the skill set that 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 we, we that we teach here on the international finance program. And our graduates have been recruited and um, we have we've very successful graduate em uh, employment um, with banks, insurance companies, of course, with the the, the advent uh, and, and the innovation of fintech companies. Um, mo most of our graduates in the, in the last uh, two years have, have gone in that direction, um, as, as well as the typical more stockbrokers, managing investment funds, portfolio managers, uh, as well as then government agencies and more on the regulatory and the public body side. We have our central banks and um, and of course, a government. Um, as well as multinational corporations. So, so again, you know, the the postgraduate qualification here um, in international finance really opens up a wide variety of career opportunities, uh, both at home and and abroad. Um, given that the fact that you know finance is is a global career. Okay, thanks very much, Adrian. And, and as I said, if there's any questions, please do feel free to to ask or, or email me after. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Thank you so much for that. So we've had brilliant presentation so far on such relevant areas, health, environmental, global finance, all so relevant and prevailing in what's happening at the moment. So, so thanks very much uh, to all of our speakers so far. Um, and next, moving on to another relevant issue around Asian and public policy. Kieran, I invite you to come in here at this point to talk about the MSc in Asian and Public Policy Programme. Thanks very much, Adrian, and uh, thanks to all of you for being with us uh, here today as well. So um, my name is Kieran Walsh and I'm the director of the Irish Centre for Social Gerontology. And essentially, I just want to give you a quick idea of uh, a new programme that we've developed and launched for this year. So it's in its first year of intake already. So essentially, the focus here is much like uh, what some of the others have described about a programme that is created in response to the kind of current and developing circumstances that we find ourselves in and how those circumstances are impacted across economic, social, cultural, uh, and in, indeed as uh, social spheres as well. So uh, essentially this program is driven by a commitment to research-led uh, interdisciplinary education. The program aims to critically examine demographic aging from a public policy perspective. And in doing so, it really tries to assess existing approaches and future directions to secure effective and a fair uh, aging society. So there are a couple of things just to note. One is that this is an interdisciplinary program, so it's certainly draws on elements of economics, but also draws on aspects of uh, public policy, social gerontology, uh, and even uh, aspects of environments and design as well. Um, so our focus is very much on trying to uh, address an issue uh, for the general public good, uh, building on the overall ethos of the school and the college. Uh, but it is to respond to a, a set of challenges that are, are really important. And there are a number of reasons why aging is critical and why we need to think about uh, integrating aging into uh, education and teaching programs uh, as this does as well. So the first element really is about that all regions of the world uh, are aging with the number of people aged 65 years and over uh, projected to double by 2050. And this 
creates sustainability challenges for our systems and institutions and equity challenges for our societies in, in every major policy domain. So we have to keep that uh, front and foremost. The second element is that this is actually recognized uh, across international European and national policy agendas. And all of these agendas now testify to the urgency of these challenges, but also really importantly, how to uh, how to feed in and reinforce this political commitment to finding innovative means to adapting to demographic change. So it creates a lot of opportunities as well across different spheres. And the third reason, I suppose, why we really wanted to create this program was that it very much responds to a gap in the market and labor force with respect to the capacity that's there and the skills that are needed to help public agencies, to help civil society organizations and to help private companies to address the sort of challenges and to capitalize on these opportunities. So as a result of this gap, certainly some existing uh, approaches are often uncoordinated and a little bit ad hoc. And I suppose like many of the other types topics that uh, some of the directors talked about here uh, today. COVID-19 has really further exposed the weaknesses around aging related policy and our neglect, particularly of the diversity of needs that older people have and the diversity of preferences and, and agency as well. So really this course is responding to that. I guess the other critical aspect that it's responding to is that it, it's about trying to fit public policy to diverse populations, but it's also to try and capitalize on some of the developments that are happening around the silver economy. So we have a silver economy in Europe at the moment, it's worth in around 3.8 billion, and that's expected to expand. But there are particular innovation sticking points, and a program like this is developed to try and help alleviate those sticking points. So, uh, in many ways, if you enroll in this program, you will benefit from three distinctive features. Firstly, the program is one of its kind in Ireland and one of only a few available internationally. Uh, we are uh, arranging a Erasmus exchange and um, different collaborations between different international institutions as well who are also focused on this kind of uh, teaching programs. It's hosted in an internationally recognized research center. So there's actually two research centers on aging, uh, our own center plus the Center for Economic and Social Research Aspects of Dementia. And then it's delivered in collaboration with key policy experts who are at the forefront of policy development. So Adrian, slide uh, please. So if you take this course uh, and it's for all those kind of critical reasons that I talked about that we will be trying to give you a, a really good sense and really instill a set of topic specific but also transferable skill sets through a combination of interdisciplinary uh, modules and that includes things that are focused very much on aging and public policy but also draws in critical and analytical research methods to be able to equip you to go into various different careers. So it's about providing in-depth knowledge of aging related policy, but it's about providing a capacity for critical thinking and the research and data and analytical methods that allow you to support that. Uh, as it is the first year in its program, um, the employment opportunities, it's certainly uh, it's about uh, looking at where we see these gaps emerging. And at the moment, it is across different public, private and, um, and NGO agencies, particularly around strategic planning, particularly around um, the ability to be able to analyze uh, policy decisions and the implications of those policy decisions, and particularly around trying to respond to the diversity of different populations as well as being uh, really uh, critical. The last thing that I will draw your attention to is that as a part of this program, it is uh, we build in an applied research project and placement collected to some of the national uh, public and NGO organizations. And there is also flexibility there to do that placement remotely or in term. And then the final element is to say that um, we offer this program as a full time and part time program, uh, both remote or in person access. So regardless of public health measures, there is those two options there uh, that are available to you. So thank you very much for the opportunity to chat to you this evening and I'll hand you back to Adrian. Perfect, Kieran. Thank you very much for that. And so Kieran, I'm just going to pull a video, uh, the video here, if you want to just introduce it quickly there for a second. Oh, well, I have it here now, if that's displaying. 
Yeah, sure. So, um, so uh, what Adrian's going to play here is just a, a short little video clip from uh, Nina Jorgansi, who is somebody who contributes to the course, who works with Age Platform Europe as one of the main uh, representation advocacy organizations in the European Union. And uh, Nina is the policy coordinator on human rights and non-discrimination. So I'll leave her to give you some insights into why this program is necessary from a policy stakeholder perspective as well. Perfect. I think there might be a little bit of issue there, Adrian. Sorry, Karen. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not sure it's coming through on the line. Uh, I'd say maybe try it once more, and if not, then we can just move on. There's there's no problem. Yeah. So what I'll do is stop stop sharing the screen. If I hit share again, and what we can do is we can put it up on the website if needed, then as well. Absolutely. Hopefully this will be it. So you can tell me here, Kieran, if this is working this time. Yep. I'm Jansi, and I've been involved in the oh. field of aging for over ten years. Um, during this time, I have been asked quite a lot of times why I choose aging as a field of study. And because it's not particularly sexy, you're not particularly old. And this, I think, reflects a fundamental misconception that aging actually starts a specific area, a specific time of our lives, or, a specific, or affects a specific aspect of our lives, which is not true. Actually, aging does start from the, from the day we were born. And aging affects our societies and uh, in, in many ways. Um, and it's not just an issue of health and pension, as one might usually think. Actually, alongside climate change, aging is one of the biggest uh, global uh, transformations that society faces face today. And this is reflected in the urgency of public policy systems to adjust to demographic um, aging. So in reality, if one works in the field of aging, it has a huge opportunity to, to work on a vast variety of, of policy areas, uh, ranging all the way from lifelong learning and education to employment, um, uh, social inclusion, human rights and uh, inequality, gender, disability, even digitalization and, and climate change indeed. Um, so there, this creates an important and growing demand for professionals and experts in the field uh, of aging that are able both to understand this transformative process and how it affects both societies, but also uh, individuals and can translate their expertise across all these diverse uh, policy fields. And this is where I think that this program delivers actually very well because so it's interdisciplinary character and it's focused both on the you know important theoretical background about understanding aging as a process for individuals and society, but also the real practical reality of public policy today at the uh, national, local, European, international levels, but also the future directions of policy. It allows to create um, professionals, experts that are critical thinkers and are versatile and can really uh, work in these very diverse um, policy fields. Thank you. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, so now we're going to move on to our, our alumni panel um, and I'm going to invite them to share their experiences with us. So Robbie, I might come to you first. I'm going to move out of slide share mode now. Um, and if you'd like to tell us uh, to introduce yourself and tell us here about your experiences studying at NUI Galway, that'd be brilliant. Thanks, Robbie. Yeah, Hi. yeah. thanks, Adrian. Um, yeah, um, I'm Robbie English. Um, I graduated from the um, Masters in Global Environmental Economics in 2019. So we were the first class, I believe. Um, so yeah, one of the main reasons before, um, or one of the reasons I picked the, the Masters was having looked at it, I thought it was, as Tom kind of alluded to, it was a more of an applied course. And um, so I thought that was really useful in terms of kind of more hands-on approach and learning the skills. And also thought it was a good balance of, you know, the environmental economics, but also the kind of the more traditional side that, you know, you need to have a strong base on as well in terms of the, the microeconomics, uh, microeconomic theory and cost benefit analysis. So I thought that was a good uh, kind of mix as well with the with the modules, um, and then uh, 
during the course and um, what I really enjoyed was uh, a lot of it was really new and um, for instance uh, we were I remember actually in Tom's class we were discussing a PCC report that had only come out probably days before and we were discussing that in the class you know discussing what that meant and um, so I really enjoyed that kind of aspect of it and um, and then though uh, I, I also enjoyed kind of as I kind of I, I enjoy the more traditional side of economics as well. I kind of I didn't want to kind of let those skills go as well. So there was micro microeconomic theory, kind of building on that, but even further to kind of more of a master's level, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and then what I thought set the course apart for me personally was the the fa uh, the option of um, work placement. And um, now in the end, uh, I actually did my uh, placement uh, as a research topic in the college, but I know having speak, spoken to a lot of my uh, course mates or the alumni now, they really, they, that was one of the reasons they went for this course. And they, I think a few of them got placed in IGs, uh, or sorry, not in IGs, in the ESRI. And a few of them was in uh, IWEA, who um, I think they've rebranded now, but Irish Wind Energy Association. And they felt that that was one of the reasons what, what set it apart. Um, so since I've graduated, um, I graduated uh, in 2019, as I said, and then I went straight into a, a job uh, in renewable energy company. Uh, I worked there for about a year and I now current, uh, about 10 months ago, uh, I switched and now I'm a consultant economist for Acon. And one of the main reasons I managed to uh, get this role now is um, they had, uh, they were building an uh, econo economics team, but it wasn't very much um, environmentally minded. And they were really looking to build on that. So when they saw the kind of skills that I had and then combined also with the cost benefit analysis, uh, they really, really uh, thought that was kind of uh, that made me stand out from other applicants. So and I do think that this course really positions its um, graduates pretty well in, in for the, the market nowadays. I mean, I did a quick scan of, you know, some of the, the jobs that are out there at the moment and now that the kind of ESG movement is kind of coming and moving to the forefront of everything, there's more of a demand to kind of think about the environmental side of things. So, for instance, um, a lot of what I do is government consulting for huge projects, but my side of it would be, you know, the environmental impacts of such and such. And for instance, now the skills that I've learned in specifically Tom's module, and there was also um, environmental uh, modeling, you know, those skills I learned in this master's, I'm applying them to my job today. So, you know, I think it's one of the really standout things of this course. Brilliant. Um, and, and Robbie, I know it's, it's thinking back a while now, but do you recall the application process for the program? Are there any insights or advice you'd give students um, who are, might be looking to undertake that process? Uh, sorry, advice in that, applying for it, is it? Yeah, advice on the application process. Um, I can think back, I know it was a while ago. Yeah, longer than I care to admit. Um, yeah, um, I suppose when I applied to it, uh, as I said, the main thing I was looking for was, you know, how is this going to benefit me? Is it is it a applied approach? And that's really what I got, what I thought about when I applied for it. Um, I looked at the courses and I didn't think they kind of, we're offering what this one could and just in the application process itself you know when you're filling out all the questions just kind of be and just be honest about why you're applying in the course and what you want to achieve from the course kind of set out set out in clear terms what you want to achieve because i found that the way the course was taught that there was a very clear line of communication and if you wanted to learn something you know if you were upfront and honest about it it could it, you you would learn it yeah fantastic um, thanks very much, Robbie, for that and for those insights. Um, yeah. Patrick, I might come over to you next. If you wouldn't mind just to introduce yourself and tell us about your experience of studying the MSc in Health Economics program. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Adrian. So, hi, my name is Patrick or Pat McHale. Um, so, I studied the master's program in Health Economics and graduated in 2018. Um, prior to that, I actually studied my undergraduate also in NUIG. So, I did. Um, I did a Bachelor of Arts in uh, Economics and Sociology and Politics. Um, I suppose since graduating from 
Then we see in health economics, I actually started a position in an Overtis a uh, week after finishing the master's. And so we went straight into internship placement. Um, so I conducted my internship placement for four uh, to eight weeks. Um, doing my dissertation based on some of my placement work that I completed and then moving from there into a graduate program with Novartis and subsequently to that I've actually entered full-time employment with them as well so um, from 2018 right through to the present day I've worked with Novartis and the global um, MDS Connect team within Novartis so I know it is a great link with um, the course as well um, I suppose probably why I chose Masters in Health Economics was I actually did an undergraduate course module from the health economics, um, which Paddy Gillespie taught at the time um, and just really fell in love with the subject prior to that, not really knowing much about it. Um, but having an interest in the pharmaceutical industry and I suppose with ever rising costs that are associated with healthcare, I just wanted to get a better understanding of why these costs were associated with it. Um, and trying to put a perception or the cost and value and really increase, appreciate the value of these healthcare products as well. Um, so yeah, that's just a bit of background, I suppose, to my time there. Um, really enjoyed the Masters, couldn't have a bad word to say about it. Um, some excellent teaching from it as well in terms of you had your hand on experience with maybe people from the industry coming in to give you their their insight but also people that are doing research into it as well um so you have people like brendan or Eamon o'shea or even paddy gillespie who are researching on cases like dementia or diabetes or whatever it may be and are bringing in people that are constantly giving seminars to discuss the different costs that are associated with healthcare and how it's changing and i know we've talked about it from environmental to financial sector but if we look at economics as a whole, it's an ever-changing landscape. No one day stays the same, um, no one sector stays the same. And I think that's why it's so interesting because your day is never going to be the same. You're always going to have a different perspective on it. So um, it was just great to get an insight from uh, from Robbie and from all the different course directors as well. So yeah, that's a bit of background to me, I suppose. And Patrick, are there any skills in particular that you developed on the program? Like, are any kind of key skills? Like, there, there, there's probably a lot to count, but they are kind of supporting you now in, in terms of your career and your role. Yeah, of course. Um, so I suppose every economist's worst nightmare when they start maybe is econometrics, and we all fear it with a passion. But I suppose when I got into it at the time, I, I fell in love with it, and that was thanks to the course directors. So when I studied it at my undergraduate, I was probably fearful of it and didn't really know what to expect from it. But um, when I got into the masters, then I found an appreciation for that with the economic model that's associated with it. So we do an awful lot of economic modeling when we take of healthcare costs um, and cost benefit analysis and cost effectiveness analysis. That's our bread and butter that we use each and every day. And um, so we taught, we were taught that during the modules, thanks to Paddy and John as well. Um, that taught us that and that's used in my everyday activities so as well um, and just an understanding of maybe prior to this I'm an economist from an economist background I know understanding of healthcare or whatever it may be so going into receiving some of those modules that taught me about healthcare as well and about the HTA landscape so health technology assessment landscape that's in Ireland and across the globe gave me a stepping stone to go into my career to where I am today. So learning that and the different landscape as well as the, thankfully through the course we do careers professional day as well, where we're brought to public sector and we're brought to the private sector. So we got an understanding of which landscape you want to go into. Now I've chose the private sector, but that doesn't mean I might go back to the public sector one day. So it's just having an understanding of all those different um cogs and wheels as well to where we can end up so it's it's a huge it's a huge industry with healthcare economics um and again it's always changing and thanks to brendan and the guys um i've been look, so lucky to pursue the career in it so yeah i have a lot to thank NYG for no i did i always think like that opportunity between internship as well and permanent roles within companies as well there's a good springboard opportunity there and i know like a, a number of, of graduates 
from health economics are employed with Novartis now. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So coming up in four years and I'm still there, so must be doing something right and the guys must have done something right with me. So still happy with it. So thanks, Adrian, and thanks everyone for giving the opportunity to speak. Absolutely. So thanks so much, Pat, for that. Um, so I, I think our, our final alumni now has also joined us. Uh, Claudio, how are you doing? I, I know you're coming straight in from work as well, so thanks very much for coming in. Hi, everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you perfectly there. Um, maybe just if, if you wouldn't mind just to introduce yourself and, and tell us a bit about yourself and your experience from studying at NUI Galway, that'd be brilliant. Thanks so much, Claudio. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Claudio. I'm 25 and I just graduated from the International Finance Master. I graduated also in 2020 with a BCom degree from NUI, specializing in finance. I secured a graduate program in 2020 that was unfortunately cancelled because of COVID and looking for ways to increase my employability potential in the financial sector, I found this master, for which, by the way, there are very uh, interesting competitive scholarships for NUI gradu graduates. So one year ago, I was looking to learn something I'm passionate about with, of course, the final aim of securing a stable job. This course was indeed both very interesting and uh, ended up helping me finding a full-time job in the world of finance. Uh, I believe it is a very well-designed program, even for those without a strong economics background. My undergraduate only had a couple of courses in economics and I, I, di I didn't struggle at all. Uh, there are three main topology of classes that uh, I really enjoyed. You have the classical economics and more theoretical sides, fundamental to understand the bigger picture of financial flows driving the global economy and how the business cycle affect and interact the business cycle affects and interacts the financial one. Uh, then there is a financial more empirical side uh, for which you will also do like you'll have you'll talk to many, many, many people from the financial industry as guest speakers, but you'll also have the possibility of uh, building a portfolio for projects. Uh, the, you will simulate, of course, and track a uh, large investment over the course of three months. And this is something that uh, recruiters really appreciate uh, when you're when you're going to look, when you're going to find a job. Uh, not only something that you can add to your CV, of course, but uh, this will come in uh, very, uh, very helpful for your own uh, personal finance management. Uh, then there is the analytical side. And uh, th this was a uh, very, very interesting. I would have never thought to eventually learn another language. Uh, I eventually learned how to code through Python. I eventually ended up building some code for myself based on just a simple uh, fundamental fundamentals suggest uh, different uh, weights allocation within my portfolio uh, every month. Uh, even you will uh, eventually learn the basics of machine learning and how to build very, very simple algorithms. Uh, these are all technical skills that uh, will make any CV stand out when, when you go look for a job in the world of finance, of course. Uh, not only you will know how to build a well-differentiated portfolio, but you will also learn how to program through Python uh, to analyze big financial data. Um, it was a very demanding course in terms of, of time and energy, but uh, also very, very well designed. Uh, it, it didn't require strong economical or financial backgrounds and lectures were extremely supportive throughout the course, making sure everybody was always on the same page. And as, as the master's finished, I, I did it. It wasn't it wasn't totally finished. I was uh, just beginning to write my own thesis and uh, I, I was able I was offered a job at a company in Dublin working for Bloomberg US. Um, so it has a very strong employability potential and uh, I'm now in charge of uh, modeling and forecasts for uh, all US uh, quoted companies. Yeah, brilliant. Um, brilliant Claudio, that was a really fantastic and succinct uh, description of the course and the key skills that you developed and the opportunities that came from it. Um, I don't know, do you want to tell us, uh, you, you kind of did allude to it there, just a small bit about your current role and the types of activities that you're engaged in. You did you did start to tease that there a small bit. Um, yeah. um, it's actually very interesting. And uh, if um, if I think of myself back at uh, back at when I was graduating with uh, with my BCom degree, I was just going into the world of finance just for for a big for a Marriott. And I would have never imagined myself working eventually for uh, Bloomberg US. What what I basically do is um, through through 
models and uh, the Bloomberg terminal. Um, I do uh, forecasting for companies quoted in the US Stock Exchange. Uh, so using his basically through historicals and, uh, and past performances of uh, US quoted companies, I, I build these models uh, forecasting their, for example, revenue or uh, cost of revenue or just uh, and then these models will eventually, like of course, after we build these models for which I work on every model for around a week, uh, after a model is built, we give either a, a sell or hold or, or buy a suggestion, and then uh, these school reports will be then be given to Bloomberg, which will give them to their clients, which would be any of these companies or uh, the actual newspaper for articles. So little part of my job will eventually end up one day in, in an article if I'm signaling there is a, a threat or a very good opportunity within a company. Yeah, sounds, that sounds brilliant, sounds really exciting. Um, a re really exciting role to be in. Um, Claudio, thank you so much for sharing those insights. Um, I, I'm just actually small, I'm conscious of time now. Um, I'm going to have to bring the session to the close in the next minute or two. I just wanted to see if anyone on the panel had any final insights or thoughts that they might like to share with any prospective applicants that we haven't covered so far. Um, and I'm happy to open that up to anyone um, if, if you want to put your hand up or, or I can come to someone if, if you don't. Um, so, Oh, yeah. Perfect. I there, Adrian, yeah, just one or two practical things I didn't mention. Um, so the, the program, uh, I think this might be the case for the other programs too. So it's offered, as some of you mentioned, it's offered um, full time and part time. Um, and also, this is the environmental program. It's also open to non economics graduates. So people who haven't done economics as their primary degree are welcome to apply. Typically, we'll we'll ask you to to do some short online preparatory course to bring up your economic skills to the level we require. but. Essentially, most of what we teach is taught from first principles anyway, so it is very much open. Some of the speakers have mentioned very much open to people who wouldn't have uh, extensive economics experience if the programs appeal to you. So that's that's something to bear in mind and the, the option of part time or full time study as well. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'm going to have to wrap the session to a close here as we're, we're coming up on time, but I just want to say thank you very much to all of our program directors, all of our alumni who joined today and shared really invaluable insights, and to all of the students who joined today as well. We hope that you found it beneficial and informative. We're here to support you on the on your journey to a postgraduate degree from right from the application, throughout uh, registration and beyond. So if you ever have any questions at any point, please do feel free to get in touch uh, and we will be very happy to support you on your journey to completing your studies with us. So we're all one of our core values at the university is openness and we're always open to support students as much as we can. Um, and so just with that, um, thank you very much to everyone who joined and take care. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, guys.